Hey guys, my name is Andrew Perlout with Renaissance Humans, and today we're talking about whether or not animal protein builds muscle better than plant protein. Uh, we're going to start off by looking at some of the lab values and what uh, the available research says, like, oh, this should work better, versus what actually happens in reality when studies look at people fed either plant protein or animal protein. So uh, a lot of you guys know that uh, for the last uh, more than a year, um, I have been really hammering home this point that the standard advice advice to vegans or people uh, following plant-based diets, that they should really just not really care about protein or you don't have to eat that much. It doesn't actually, that's not supported by the scientific literature, quite the opposite. I mean, if you eat as much protein as is generally prescribed for vegans, you're going to, statistically speaking, have a greater risk of uh, bone fracture, have a greater risk of sarcopenia as you age, losing your muscle mass, your immune function will be somewhat compromised. Uh, athletically, you will not be gaining as much uh, muscle and strength as you could if you were interested in athletics. Uh, generally speaking, there's a, a wide variety of reasons why you should probably be eating more protein than is generally recommended, and I won't go over that, but uh, you can see um, my article on how much people with different goals should be, how much protein people uh, with different goals should be eating. Uh, yeah, that will be a link in the corner and in the video notes below. So, uh, uh, first off, before we get into this subject, if you would rather read about this subject or uh, you're interested in finding links to the studies that I'm citing, uh, it will be once again uh, video notes below, and I'll put a link in the corner right now. So, uh, Plant protein versus animal protein. Uh, as we've talked about how much protein you need, sometimes people ask me, all right, how much protein do you need? But there's different types of protein. Protein is basically just um, a bundle of amino acids. And we have uh, basically amino acids which we are capable of synthesizing as humans without any intake, uh, as long as we have the prerequisites. Um, and then we have the amino acids that we actually need to take in from our food. So if we're eating protein that is relatively low in certain amino acids, that's not the same as getting protein uh, from a different bundle of amino acids. Uh, so that really makes a difference when it comes to building muscle. Of the nine essential amino acids we need to take in from food, three really stand out for their muscle building ability. The branch chain amino acids, leucine, isoleucine, and valine. But of these three, it's really leucine that has been shown to be a potential issue with plant protein in studies. When you eat some food and therefore get carbs coming in, insulin is produced, and you have leucine on hand, it kind of flags down the body and it says, hey, we have what it, we need in order to actually start building muscle, to start muscle protein synthesis. And that's great if you've got leucine on hand, but not all foods provide much leucine. So if you just worked out hard, did some resistance training, and you wanna maximize the amount of muscle you're gonna put on as a result of that workout, over the next few days, for every meal you have, you need to take in 0 0.05 grams per kilogram of body weight, which for most people is two to three grams of leucine. So how hard could it be to get two to three grams of leucine? Well, if you ate 300 calories of beef, uh, you can get 11 grams, no problem. 300 calories of sweet potato though, and you've got less than half a gram. There are plenty of leucine-rich plant foods. Black beans, 300 calories, gives you about two grams. But go ahead and look through the meat, dairy, and eggs, and, and whole animal foods, and then ignore the foods that are plant foods that are really low in protein and low in leucine and just look at the really most protein dense leucine dense plant foods you'll find that the animal foods get 8 to 11 percent of their protein from leucine whereas the plant foods even the most protein dense ones only get six to eight percent this study used rats and its funding is potentially biased but because its findings are supported by everything else we're talking about today and uh they're interesting findings we're gonna quickly go over it a lot of popular vegan diets tell people don't eat more than 10 percent of calories from protein for optimal health but in this study rats fed 10 percent protein from either animal sources or 
plant sources had the animal sourced food caused way more muscle protein synthesis. But when the rats got 30% of their calories from protein, the plant and animal protein caused about the same amount of muscle protein synthesis. There wasn't a significant difference. This is because more total protein allowed the plant food to surpass the leucine threshold that was holding it back at 10% of calories. In fact, when you supplement plant protein with leucine to just bring it above that threshold, it becomes just as effective as animal protein when it's tested in humans. Don't make the mistake of thinking that you can just eat a very low protein diet and just supplement with some leucine. It'll be just as good as if you were eating a high protein diet. It totally does not work that way. This study tackled that question by equalizing out leucine, but having radically different protein intakes. 35 grams of whey protein, 60 grams of wheat protein, both have 4.4 grams of leucine, so that's above the threshold, which one wins? The wheat, of course. Total protein still matters, it just is held back in plant protein by this threshold. All right, so that's the lab values. That's the muscle building potential. But what actually happens in terms of real life results? How much muscle and strength is built uh, on plant protein versus animal protein? This study took novice weightlifters and put them on an identical routine. After their workouts, a third got nothing, a third got milk protein, and a third got soy protein in equal quantities. Now, the milk protein had 1.7 grams of leucine, while the soy protein had 1.4, both under the leucine threshold. So who built the most muscle? Well, the soy group did better than the control group, the, but the milk group still built way more muscle than the soy group, if you, as you see in the top right corner. Okay, but how much muscle will plant protein build if we push it past that leucine threshold. This study took experienced weightlifters and put them on an identical routine. They got either 48 grams of rice protein or the same amount of whey protein, both of which had leucine contents past the threshold. The results were much different this time, with the rice group building roughly the same amount of muscle as the whey group. So this led the researchers to conclude that it doesn't really matter what type of protein you're eating so long as there's an adequate amount of it. I certainly wouldn't suggest anyone try to micromanage me uh, per meal leucine intake, but rather to just hit adequate protein intake. See my article and video for more information on that. So I hope you found that information useful. I hope you have started uh, incorporating a little more protein in your diet and that you are uh, seeing the benefits of it. Uh, so talk to you later.